first year ever that that uh, the research. But I, I, I can't I give think. you a World Series right now off the top of my head. The '86 Mets. Uh, Boston Red Sox series. The Red Sox took the first two in Shea, and the Mets went out and won game three. I believe they also won game four, and Boston won game five. We all know what happened in game six and seven. So uh, that series right off the top of my head. That's only because <laughs> I'm a Mets fan. That's because you're a Mets fan. I know <laughs> <You> that. Know? <laughs> and who are the Mets going to get? I don't know what they're going to do now. I know one of the react one of the re- reasons you could tell Girardi was a good hire is that New York, uh, the newspapers were all you know the fans, the Met fans, up in arms that they didn't get Girardi. Uh, I don't know what the Mets are going to do. I think the Mets are going to maybe go the path of these guys that you know, these first year managers that maybe nobody uh, hears about. And you know, any manager decision is fifty fifty. I mean, if you hire AJ Hinch, great. If you hire Gabe Kapler. Not so great. No. So, uh, you know, the Mets are probably going down that direction. Are they going to maybe look at Showalter? Possibly, but although I think if, you, if you're going to – if you weren't going to go with Girardi, I don't see why you would go with Showalter. I think they want to hire a guy that they can sort of groom or work – the front office can work with. So, yet, like I said, you get A.J. Hinch, great. Or Alex Cora, great. You get Gabe Kapler or Andy Green of San Diego, not so great. So. Madden's pretty much set in. in has yeah, he signed he's already, with the yeah, he's been announced. He's in Lo, uh, Los Angeles. And so. Cole is a fan of him? Well, Garrett Cole is. He's an L.A. guy. Yeah, he's from there. Supposedly that's where he wants to go land and, you know, be give the Angels a shot with Trout. Uh, but it seems that the Angels sign different people that, with big names and big uh, – big uh, resumes right and they just they've been disappear. burned by it yeah. before yeah po- uh, josh uh, hamilton they signed a lot of other free agents Pujols, the Pujols Pujols really signing really hasn't worked out so yeah i mean i think the, the angels I, I my opinion is they're caught in the fact that they have mike trout they feel the need to win with mike trout mike trout's 26 27 years old now so it's really hard to sell a five-year rebuilding plan with mike trout so they're going to try to kind of piecemeal it together now historically that really doesn't work it worked with the 2013 red sox but historically uh you know when you try to piecemeal it together and add people on the go it doesn't really uh lead to sustained success all right well we appreciate uh, your time i took you away from the concession that's all right i'm good <laughs> he, yeah i saw he got the concession stand <laughs> all right mike all right, guys a thanks a lot look for mike's column must win in the press periodically. And, of course, his coverage of this game will be in the press of Atlantic City tomorrow and uh, online later tonight. You always have to give him a hard time about being a Mets fan, though, here. Uh, no need to be a hard time. Uh, you know, a jokingly hard time. If you're planning a party and want to make it special, get It's a Rodeo custom on-site catering involved. Rodeo Catering has provided a wide variety of food and drink to gatherings all over New Jersey, from birthday parties to wedding receptions to spectacular tailgating at major sports events. When you plan your next event, make your first call to John Rodeo, 609-839-6209. You set the date, they bring the party. It's a Rodeo Custom Catering. Email them at itsarodeo at gmail.com. Tom, i got to say, that was one of the better... Uh, halftime shows I've seen as far as choreography and and all oh, that was yeah. going on there. That was that was quite a show. Yeah, if you get a chance, you can go to OceanCitySports.com and watch it. If you're not watching now, here's the uh, kick. It's short, taking it to 31 yard line, across the 35 and hit hard. Oh wait, he's not down yet, and they haven't blown the whistle. And there's a flag. I think it's Schneider. It's a strange play. With the he ran like Schneider. Another face max penalty against Oakcrest. So the ball comes out to the 47 yard line. Well, the fact that they get the ball here to start the second half is obviously a big plus to keep some momentum. Play action down the middle. There's Jamison. He makes the catch. He's down to the 35. They scored on that play against Triton. 
53 yards. <laughs> and uh, here, almost it would have been a 53 yards again if he'd have gone all the way, but he was stopped at the 35-yard line, a first down for Ocean City. Uh, at, Ocrest left the kicking tee on the field. They're getting that off now because they're down near where the, where the kickoff came from. Right. But uh, just a quick slant pattern. They faked the handoff to Wilson and, and hit Jamison right over the middle on a quick slant. Good play. Slot right, receiver left. High snap. Rapetti keeps it. He's grabbed in the backfield, pulls out of that, and gets across the line of scrimmage for about a one-yard gain. Yeah, they, they like they like that snap to be a little, as I said before, a little bit more on a line drive. They just keep working on it. It's not as easy as it looks. But ever since uh, quarterbacks went away from the uh, being up under center, it's you know it's a talent. But you know it, it has a lot to do uh, how that snap comes back to you has a lot to do with the timing of the play. Receiver to each side, Rapetti, second and nine, hands it off. Looking for room, and they get down to maybe the 32-yard line. Isaac Wilson cut it back. So it'll be third down. Call it uh, short eight. Again, you got to wonder if they consider this inside uh, four-down territory here inside the 35-yard line. Wilson will be to the right of Rapetti. Schneider split to the right. Receiver left. Repetti back to throw, pump fakes, rolls right. And he's going to tuck it in, flag on the play, a pink flag. Almost thrown into a, a holding area against the Raiders. They may refuse this penalty. It is holding. He didn't gain too much. So it'll be, it would be fourth and about eight, but they're going to take the penalty. Moves them back out to the 43-yard line, where it'll be third down at about 14. They come with that wide receiver package now. But they, Rapetti, had, he wanted to go to uh, Schneider, who had a little stop and go, but uh, well covered on this near sideline. Third and 18, Rapetti's alone in the backfield. The snap up in the air, but he catches it. Avoids the up. Oh, no, he doesn't. He spun to the ground. Back inside the 40-yard line by uh, Taz Mobley, six foot, 236 pound senior. Well, that takes care of uh, four down territory. It's fourth and forever. Back at the 41 yard line, Ocean City will punt. Fourth and 34. And Rapetti stands at about his own 27 yard line. Andrews expecting a big punt. He's almost down to the 10. Well, Good bad. snap. High kick. He comes up a little, but it carries to the 17-yard line. Andrews at the 20, avoids the tackle, gets out of another one. He's to, to the right sideline. He's across the 30. He's to the 35, and Oakcrest will take over close to its own 40-yard line. Boy, what an exciting runner he is and the ability to, for people to miss. He's got good speed. Looks like they're going to spot the ball on the 38-yard line. I like him. 27-7, to 7, Ocean City on top here. Two touchdown passes by Joe Rapetti. A touchdown run by Rapetti. Another touchdown run by Isaac Wilson. Ocrest scored on a Casanova to Tironis touchdown pass. Casanova back to his right, slot to the left, back to throw. Settles in, being pressured, chased from behind and caught from behind. Mike Rhodes makes the tackle at the 35-yard line. Lou Connie with good coverage downfield. That's where Casanova wanted to go with the pass. Looks like there's a flag on the play. Yep, another pink one. Holding against Ocrest. They lost about uh, four yards on the play, but they're going to take the penalty. The penalty is behind the line of scrimmage, so it's an ex a, a longer than the just 10 yards. They're going to be all the way back to the 20-yard line, They're just across the 20. Call it the 21. 
So it's a tw- uh, first and 27. Wow. <laughs> you don't hear that often. First down and 28 for the Falcons. Sanova was replaced as a completed pass out to about the 30 yard line to Taronis. Nice pick up on the play, but not enough for a first down. Joel Thompson, a 5'10, 147 pound freshman, is one for one with a completion out to the 30, but it's a, a punting situation. Yeah, the Raiders were giving them that uh, shorter pass in the middle of the field, protecting, you know, for that long, the long one that would cost them to give up the first down. Dunlap to punt. I think they only got 10 guys on the field. Yeah, here comes number 10, or 11. <laughs> Clock and running. And it's Joel Thompson. Clock running. They better get this snap off. Low snap. Picks it up off the ground. Just gets the kick away. It's end over end. May have been blocked or at least touched. And what? for some reason, Ocean City covered it. Beckman, I guess, thought it was up for grabs, and he dove on top of it. Then again, he stopped it from rolling a couple more yards, so. Ocean City takes over on its own 44. He'd be one of the few guys I wouldn't be as nervous about doing something like that because he's got great hands. But still, that's not something a coach wants you to do when that ball's about ready to, to be blown dead there. On the 44, Ocean City first and 10. They lead 27-7 to seven, halfway through the third quarter here at Ocrest. Uh Nothing in the middle of the line for Wilson. He's pulled to the ground. And he's pulled to the ground by Angel Fisher, the six foot, 374 pound junior. Again, the defenses have dominated, plus the penalties have hurt quite a bit as well. Second, a little more than 10 to go. Jacob Wilson checks in, high snap. Repetti handles it. Pump fakes, avoids the rush, rolls right. Pass is incomplete. He put it right in the hands of Beckman. In this case, he was hit from behind, split second later, and couldn't hold on to it. So it's incomplete. Yeah, Andrews got there simultaneous with the football. Made a nice defensive play. Third and ten for Ocean City. Repetti's alone in the backfield. Back to throw. Looking, looking. Now rolls to his right. Has some time. Being chased. He's going to run with the ball. And he's Ooh. close to a first down. I think he got it, Tom. The, see where they spot it. The way he bounced 
It's close. It's really close. I mean, he, he jumped over the tackler and kind of bounced forward. He's just outside the 45. Now, they're moving the chains on the other side, but there's been no signal. The marker's right on the 40. One yard line on the far side. Guy, guy started to move the chains, but uh, the guy who has the first down uh, marker where you have to get to, uh, he did not move. So they're going to bring the chains all the way across the field. It's very close. I think it's a uh, very good run by Repetti. They almost tripped Sh uh, Schneider bringing those chains across. Yeah. Players have to be careful when they're bringing out the chains. I've seen guys fall. In fact, I saw a guy fall and get hurt. Had to come out of the game. I know. I still think one of the worst things I've seen was uh, the guy that where they threw the flag and it went and hit him in the eye. Went through uh, his yeah. face mask and hit him in the eye. Yeah, he's two inches, a couple inches short of the first down. Ocean City will probably go for it. It's just outside the forty-five yard line of uh, Oakrest. Well, they'll get everybody inside. The linebackers will fill the gaps. Probably be a quarterback sneak. We'll see what happens. They're spotting the ball, of course, based on the position at the sideline. They put it in on the hash mark. 5-18 left third quarter. Ocean City on top here, 27-7. to Nobody scored yet in the second half. And Repetti will not be under center, at least not right now. He's got Wilson to his right. He has a few words for the offensive line. Gets the snap, gives it to Wilson. Wilson drives inside the 45 for a first down. Still going. He's down almost to the 40. Unofficially, Ocean City's 11th first down. I guess uh, they... Figure the defense would be guessing quarterback sneak as well and give it to Wilson. A lot of confidence. Ball's at the 41-yard line, first to 10, Ocean City. Wilson splits to the right. He's in the slot. Back to throw, Repetti out to Schneider on the left side. He's hit right away, and he manages to drag that tackler who had a wrapped around the foot for a yard or so, close to the 30, and may have got a first down. Yep, he did. He has uh, been well defensed this game, Tom. They, they haven't, uh, it hasn't been open as much as he has been in some of the other games. Again, Rapetti's alone in the backfield. Wilson's a slot back on the left side. Three receivers to the right. Pump fake, and up the middle goes Rapetti, and he's got big yardage. Slides down inside the 15-yard line. There's a flag in the backfield. It's like a, almost like a quarterback draw. Goes up the middle. A holding penalty against Ocean City will wipe out this run. It'll be a hold on the offense. Well, sometimes that's, people say, that's a shame. That was a great run, but maybe it was uh, aided by that hold. Again, these two teams shooting themselves in the foot offensively. They move the ball all the way back to the 45-yard line, so it's about 25 yards to go. Tom, one difference in this game from the previous ones? We're not in a running clock in the second half. Mm -hmm. One of them, it, it took the second half. What was it? Uh, First score, wasn't it, in the second yeah, half? Yeah, Triton, I think it was, last week. Mm -hmm. Repetti, complete to Beckman. And Beckman's hit immediately and driven out of bounds. Oh, stayed inbound, excuse me. Uh, at about the 37-yard uh, line. Brian Beckman with the reception on the outside left. Hey, Raiders getting two or three different guys in each play. Made by Angel Casanova and Tavion Gray. Ball's on the 37. Second, second, about down. 16. Back to throw, Repetti. Complete to Schneider on the left sideline. Gain of about three or four yards, so it's going to be third and 11 or 12 yards to go. Again, Schneider well covered over there, actually double covered. By Jake Tackled immediately when he catches the ball. Ocean City shifts Rhodes to the 
right tackle. Might even be eligible out there. Repetti with it, rolling right, looking. Looking. Fires for Grimley. It's a little high, and he can't pull it in. So it'll be fourth and about 12 or 13 yards to go. Yeah, I mean, Repetti bought a lot of time. He got a lot of good blocking, and, and uh, you know, eventually uh, Grimley got himself open, and, and the pass just delivered a little too high. It wouldn't have been enough for a first down anyway, but it would have made the fourth down play a little shorter. Fourth and about 13. Wouldn't be surprised to see that quarterback draw again. Slot to the right, back to throw, Repetti. Looking, looking. Now he rolls to the right, tucks it under, throws. Schneider's open. Schneider with the 10. And Schneider's to the Darn close. Boy, he had, he had great. Or else he took, took a shot at it, but very close to being an. Across that line. This team into the hands of Joe Rapetti in this possession. And he's responded as he has all season. I think he threw that ball from the 33 yard line, Tom. Game gets the ball down to the five or six yard line. Second and goal. You know, what a big play that was. They didn't uh, didn't do much the, the previous two plays. And, again, the line brought, bought him a tremendous amount of time and, and flushed him from the pocket eventually. But uh, just a real good presence to see who's available downfield and he finds his favorite receiver. Yeah. That will bring up second down and goal. Wilson checks in, Isaac Wilson to the left of Rapetti. Back to throw. He's rolling left, there's room out there. And Rapetti has an angle to the goal line, he's in for his second touchdown of the game. He had all the receivers going to the right and cutting across the field to the right. And that left all the defenders going with them, obviously. And uh, nobody stayed home to make sure that Rapetti wasn't going to run it in, and he took advantage. 33-7. to seven. Beckman will hold. McGonigal will kick for the extra point. Third, second touchdown run of the game for Rapetti. He's thrown two touchdowns. Ball is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. And good. So McGonigal, he's... Uh, Four for five and one blocked. 34 to seven. Ocean City on top here uh, in Mays Landing. You need a sign? Well, you need Captain Charlie. Captain Charlie uses blue water graphics and cape signs to create signs for real estate and other businesses. They do construction site signs and window lettering for your business. They can provide letters. You can reach Blue Water Graphics at 609-823-8891 and Cape Signs, 856-506-06110. They buy whatever lettering you need at Blue Water Graphics and Cape Signs. 34-7. to Ocean City on top here. Raiders lead all Cape Atlantic League schools in points scored per game. Coming into this end, fewest points allowed per game. The toughest test was St. Augustine, of course. And uh, they'll play, it looks like, for the division championship pretty much next Friday. Here's the kick down to about the six-yard line. Coming up the right side and stopped at the 25. You know, Tom, nobody uh, on either side of the bridge needs any extra motivation for a, a, a mainland Ocean City game, no matter what the sport. And yet, uh, as you said, for a division champion, it's over there in Linwood next Friday night. There's also a new uh, trophy been created. It will be presented for the first time at... 
in the game. I don't know what the exact name of it is, but it's something to do with the bridge and the causeway. Uh, and uh, the play the trophy until they play again. Hmm. And Mike O'Brien, former mainland athlete, now one of their broadcasters, is uh, the guy that put the idea together. Here's a pass over the middle, and it's complete. I wonder if something happened. I don't see him on the sideline, Tom. Me either. Unless he's on the field in a different position. Keep in mind, he was one of the top wide receivers in the among Cape Atlantic League players last year. So it's uh, second and two. Yeah, there he is. He's over the middle now running a pattern. Thompson scrambles, throws, completes the pass to Andrews. Uh, across the 40 at the 41, where uh, Andrews is uh, stopped by Tom Shutta, and a first down for Oakcrest. So Thompson is 5'10", 147 pounds, quite a bit different than a 6'3", 186-pound Angel Casanova. But uh, I tell you, he delivered a nice pass there, running running left and, and throwing against his, across his body there. Yeah, he's completed two nice passes. He's a freshman. Casanova gives him a gr another great target. Here they go, running up the middle. Maybe a yard on the play. Josh Metzer with the carry up the middle. Picks up a yard on the play. It'll be second and nine. Looks like Mike Gray in on the tackle. It really, uh, if he's 5'10", I'm probably 6'5". <laughs> Who's that? The quarterback. Well, he, he's standing next to Andrews and... <laughs> Casanova and all those guys. Yeah, but still. <laughs> That's the end of the third quarter here in uh, Mays Landing with the Ocean City on top of Oakcrest, 34 to 7. If you or somebody you know hopes to continue playing sports in college, Bill Shalcross at Crossover Productions can help. Bill can assist you in putting your best foot forward with a professionally produced highlight video at an affordable price. All sports are welcome, and no job is too big or too small. Bill Shellcross has more than 25 years of experience recording sports events and creating edited videos. Call Bill at 60-1-3. Crossover Productions. Producing quality video since 1991. And the Sacco family has been feeding South Jersey for nearly 50 years at Sacco Sub, serving the biggest and best subs, sandwiches, party trays, and Italian food in the area. We'll tell you more about them, but Oakcrest is ready to go. Second and about eight. Trying to sweep the outside. Cutting it back is uh, Casanova with some room. And he's finally brought down inside the Ocean City 35-yard line by Rohner. I'll tell you, what a really nice move he put on just at the line of scrimmage to break to the outside. He got a couple good blocks, but, you know, maybe they feel like he's too valuable to be able to, with the ball in his hands, to run the football. If that's the case, Thompson's going to get quite a bit of uh, experience as a freshman between now and the end of the season. On the 32 of Ocean City, first and 10. Seventh first down for Oakcrest. Now they switch, switch uh, Taronis and Casanova, switch places. Thompson waits to snap. Ball goes through his hands, and he just covers it in time. Bearing down on him was Brad Jamison. He just covered that loose ball, and Oakcrest loses about uh, six yards on the bad snap or the fumbled snap, wherever you want to look at it. Another mistake by the offense. As I said, neither offense has really uh, done much except the, uh, the one big play that the Raiders had there toward the end of that last possession. And then, of course, they do get it in the end zone. But Second and, 16. Second and 16. Three receivers to the right, one wide to the left. Thompson gets a snap, hands it off, and not much. They hit, hit the center of the line and 
get to about the 36-yard line. Matt Christie making the stop there. So you would, again, think that Oakcrest is in four-down territory. Ball on the 36 of Ocean City. Ten minutes left. They trail by 34 to 7. Third and 15. Split to the left is uh, Tavion Gray. Slot, uh, th- excuse me, three receivers to the right. Back to throw, Thompson. Under some pressure, throws over the middle. It's caught and pulled down is Sebastian Taronis, but the, pretty much at the line of scrimmage, maybe even behind the line of scrimmage. And Sarah makes the stop there. Had a hold of his ankle, wasn't letting go. Fourth and about 15 for Oakcrest. And it looks like they are going to go after it. There's uh, nine and a half minutes left in the game. They're down 34-7. to seven. I think you're going to see... Uh, I think you're going to see a timeout. I, I think Casanova's got to figure into this play somehow. Oakcrest breaks the huddle. Taking a lot of time here. Yes, they are. Thompson's ready, though. And they get it off. He's back to throw. Let's it go. Cross field. Battle for the ball. And Conte knocks it down. But they're going to call pass interference. He had his arm wrapped around the back of the intended receiver, and that was enough to get a flag. Yep, good call. I mean, both officials grabbed the flag right away, and, and, uh, you know, he was in good position and knocked the pass down, but he did have that left arm wrapped around the waist of the receiver, and that's where the the penalty's coming from. It's going to. I don't know if it's going to give him a first down or not, Tom. I think they're going to be short. It's going to be uh, fourth, fourth or less three. than a yard. Okay. I think. They haven't moved the ball marker down there yet, but I think it's going to be about a yard. Okay, you're right. Less than a yard, you're right. Thompson back to his left. Gets the snap. And trying to sweep the left side and getting the first down. Hit behind the line, but bounces off of that. And Taronis gets it into the 20. And it's a first down for Oakcrest. Their eighth of the game. So he gets only a yard. Only needed half a yard. Of course, they're at the Ocean City 20-yard line. Clock against... Oakcrest at this point with eight and a half minutes remaining. Again, they trail by 27 points. Trips to the right. Receiver to the left. Thompson with the back to his right. Gets a snap. He rolls right. He's under pressure. His pass is incomplete. (laughs) able to pick that off because the Thompson made him throw that ball a lot sooner than he wanted to will drain had him in his sights second and ten at the Ocean City 20 Thompson awaits the snap gets it Drops back, fires quickly over the middle. It's intercepted. Runner with his second interception of the game inside the five, but Ocean City takes over. Yeah, you know, good for Rawners, I mean, if there was any doubt in the outcome of this game, there should be no doubt now. So Ocean City takes over on its own four. Leading 34-7 to seven with 8-11 left in the fourth quarter. They change footballs. I don't know why 
Well, I think it's more understandable in uh, high school than it is in the upper levels that the teams use their own football. Here's a handoff up the middle. Some run here for Wilson out across the 10 to about the 12. So he takes uh, Ocean City away from its own goal line. I think uh, the difference is in the NFL, Tom, they, they you know, the, the footballs are provided by the league. Yeah. But they're, I mean, they're way different in high school. Yeah. Now Wilson tried to hit the center here and didn't get anywhere. So it's going to be third down for Ocean City. And if that, if that wind is still there, it's blowing into their faces. Widgie Selfman, 6'4", 221-pound senior, made the stop. It's third down and about uh, three or four yards to go for Ocean City, deep in their own territory, just across their own 10. The Raiders lead 34-7, to 7.15 left. We're in the fourth quarter. Trips to the left, slot to the right. Repetti alone in the backfield. Quick pass. Schneider has the first down, and he's pulled down at about the 17-yard line. Again, this is one of the few games where the uh, starters are going to get four quarters in, which, you know, it might sound trite, but, you know, that's, that's good. I mean, they're going to play four quarters next week, you would imagine. First and 10. Ocean City at the 18. Repetti hands the ball. In the football game or not, I mean, you know, they're driving for a touchdown. And then the interception just kind of, you know, I think they're just kind of go through the motions a little bit here. Running room uh, across the 35-yard line. So it'll be uh, second and five. Repetti's done a good job of running the ball, passing the football consistently throughout this season. This is certainly one of the better ones. Runs that offense very effectively. Yep. And it helps he's got some good guys around. Gets the ball. Mazzatelli runs into a, pi a pile of defenders at about the 38 yard line. He's a couple yards short of the first down. Third and about three. Isaac Wilson checks in. Ocean City will have three receivers out to the left, one to the right. Repetti back to throw over the middle. It's caught by Grimley. He's got the first down. The 50 pounds are driven down anyway at the 38-yard line of uh, Oakcrest, the big play. Yep. Does that little quick little, uh, I don't know, we used to call it a little button hook. You know, you just go out five, six yards, turn around, and the pass is there. At the 39, first and 10. Repetti hands it off. Isaac Wilson off the right side. He's got the first down, it looks like, inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. There's a flag away from the play. And another one. One of them's pink, the other one's yellow. <laughs> some, maybe a couple of players having words. A couple of players having words at the sideline or after the play was over near the sideline. I don't know if there's a flag on each of them which is the case more than half the time. Unsportsmanlike conduct both ways, so nothing happens. Sometimes the coaches will take the offending player out of the game for a play or two, let them sit and relax. Not sure who the penalty's on. Not that we would tell you anyway. 
Ball's inside the 30 at about the 29. They got the first down. 16th of the game for Ocean City. Downs and gave up 41. Here's a handoff. And Jacob Wilson just gets a yard or two. Clock continues to run. Go to six and one, and they'll play in Linwood next uh, Friday night against seven and zero oh Mainland for a lead. Technically, Mainland Clinton's play Egg Harbor. Thanks, City wins. They do with a quick pitch, and Jacob Wilson down the right sideline, close to the twenty yard line. That could have been a forward pass. We'll just check it out on film and see how it works out you know uh you talk about think mainland going to play egg harbor township on thanksgiving and, and ocean city going to going to play pleasantville as usual and that could be a very very good football game this year and it has been in the past but uh could be especially good game this year third and about three repetti with jacob wilson to his right repetti keeps it going right He's got the first down and hit and driven out of bounds. So Repetti with the carry over the right side. This clock's still running. They must have stopped his forward progress before they drove him out of bounds. Now they, yep, clock is running. 17 first downs for Ocean City. Number 12, Tavion Green. They've really offensively played very well today, Tom, and defensively as well, except uh, in that... Uh, beginning of the third quarter Jacob Wilson off the right side continues uh, running hard he scored two touchdowns against Triton last week takes it into the 14 yard line certainly wouldn't mind another score but they'd be content to just kind of run the rest of the clock out here under two and a half I'd be surprised if they throw the ball here never know Second and seven. Mazzatelli's in. He's to the left of Rapetti. Hands it off to Mazzatelli, and he's brought down from behind. Loses about a yard or two, so it'll be third and almost ten. Now, well, decision here. As well as Josh Mensa. We send uh, Jacob Wilson in. He had come off the sideline with a hip pad problem or something. He's back on. Repetti gives it to Jacob Wilson. And he bangs to about the 14, 13, maybe 12 yard line. Jacob Finally Wilson blow the whistle. He's maybe at 11. We'll see where they spot it. But he's short of the first down. It'll be fourth down. And about four. Got a big push from behind by Mike Rhodes. Probably added a couple yards to it. Wilson, Jacob Wilson stays in the game. Grimley comes back in. Jacob Wilson gets it. Hits the right side. He's inside the 10. We'll see if he got the first down. He's close. Jacob Wilson with the carry. Looks like they're going to measure. Oh. No. He didn't get it. Oakcrest takes over. So with four, 45 seconds left, Oakcrest takes over the football in its own nine. These are the winners of the gift card raffle. 45 seconds left. You remind you, Saka Subs is open at 11 every morning at 926 Asbury Avenue in Ocean City until 8 Thursday through Saturday until 7 the rest of the week. Every Thursday, it's a pizza party with special savings and great food. Phone Saka Subs at 609-525-0460. Make Saka Subs part of your entertaining. So, Oakcrest with the... Uh, 
45 seconds left. Has a ball in its own nine. Ocean City's going to win. They lead 34 to seven. They got Casanova back there at quarterback again. No. Thompson. I don't think it's Thompson either. No. Is it? It is. It is Thompson. Yeah, I thought I saw him go on the field. So the game two on the running or one on the running play to the ten. It's and they may not get this play. Thompson awaits the snap. Double slot formation. And he hands it off straight up the middle. And bouncing it to the outside for about five yards. And that's it. So Ocean City makes it 6-1 and one on the season with a 34-7 victory. And they will now set their sights on mainland next Friday in Linwood for the lead and possibly the championship of the Independence Division of the West Jersey Football League. We'll take time out here for a couple of messages, and then we'll be back to recap and wrap things up for you. You're listening to High School Football on 106.3 The Shore.